Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome back to my shop. So today we're working on Project Split Decision. If you're new to my channel, I'll give you a quick rundown on what actually Project Split Decision is. So it's called Split Decision for one reason and one reason only. I'm making two cars because, you know, everybody can make one car, so I'm going to make it a little more challenging on myself. So the two cars are actually going to be powered by two different power plants, though. The first car is going to be powered by a supercharged Ford Illuminator XS that has been made up to a custom gear Lamborghini Gallardo transmission. So that's kind of the gas world. And the second car is going to be powered by a Tesla Model S that's going to have a custom ECU. Still working out what kind of batteries we're going to be using in that, but uh, obviously, so we got a gas electric thing kind of happening. Both cars are going to look identical, and both cars are going to be using the same suspension and the same frame design. So uh, if you're new to my channel, like I said, the, uh, where we left off was the rear frame section. So this is uh, obviously, you can't see the frame because here's the body. But behind here is the custom frame that I've made up. If you want to see it, you can go back to the last video. But this custom frame needs to be transferred over to the chassis jig so I can go ahead and start extending it as well as getting the Corvette's front suspension onto the welding table and get that set to the right ride height so I can make a custom front end to kind of match up to the custom rear end that I've designed. So uh, what we need to do next is, uh, obviously I should talk about this body here a little bit. So this is actually a K1 that's been cut up. Uh, we're gonna use some of the styling cues from this body kind of to make our own body. Uh, there's gonna be some changes, obviously major changes, extensions, uh, width extensions, as well as length extensions onto this frame and some, some changes to the styling cues in general. But this is gonna kind of give us a starting point. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this body off of here and get the frame section transferred over. So we went ahead uh, and obviously you saw the time lapse of uh, the suspension, but then I got a crazy idea of uh, actually go ahead and bringing the body down and actually putting it on the car a little bit uh, and the firewall um, from the other video. So uh, we got some little challenges right now. So if you see the line, hey Tim, point, there you go. So that first line there, that's the motor height as it currently stands. So it's pretty close to, uh, uh, and the next line up Tim. So that one is 42 inches. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's 40 inches. So originally I wanted to have the car with a 40 inch ride height, similar to a Ford GT40 um, back in the day, but that's a little too low. So now we're thinking 44, or 40, I'm sorry, 42 inches, and 42 inches is the Lamborghini Aventador. So that's the, the goal. That's the one we really want to do. And the other line up there, very top, is 44 inches, and that's the current Ford GT. So we're somewhere between the 42 and 44. We, uh, Kind of have some challenges though, as you can kind of see. So we're working through that right now. We'll do um, a little more testing. We're actually going to do some side shots here. We'll get uh, some seating position and try to figure out where the top hoop is going to go. A uh, little bit out of order, but uh, that's all right. We're, we're having fun. So that's what's the important part. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll move the camera, get it to the side, and we'll get some uh, side shots of seating positions and try to figure this out. So here's the side of the car as it stands today. This is actually only for reference. The car is going to change dramatically over time. I really just kind of put this up here to start making sure I thought through some of the challenges, some other problems that I know I'm going to have to face. There's one that I've actually been contemplating for a while now, and, and this really needs to be addressed. And that's the elephant in the room, which is the, the front glass. The, um, this is actually a big piece of glass. It's, it's almost 44 inches from the top crest down to where the cow sits right now. I don't know if I'm going to leave it at exactly that length, but uh, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to uh, figure out what I can do with this. So the only option really is to either get a donor car that has a larger windshield and cut the windshield down, or actually just go ahead and stick with a factory windshield 
say something out of like a Lamborghini, which would you know be used for this type of a, for the aggressive rake in the first place. So those are my two options. I think I'm actually uh, some people left some comments on my Instagram account about somebody to contact, and I'm going to do that today and see if they can't point me in the right direction or even help me out. Um, the side glass is also going to be a problem, given the uh, given. Some, I have got to get figure out how I'm going to do these doors exactly and how they're going to crust up. And, you know, it's going to be a kind of like a rolled glass well, as well, a curved glass. So, uh, all fun and games. So, really, let's uh, go ahead and put this aside for right now. Go back over to the welding table and get the front uh, section welded up so I can actually get it in here, which will then allow me to set the wheel length. It's going to be 106 inches. And then I'll create the, uh, the link for the, the tubes that I need to cut for the center section and, and get the actual rolling chassis kind of to a point where it'll roll. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start that. So this is our second rear frame. It is completed. So now what we've got to do is actually go ahead and pull this off and actually pull off the sub cradle and get the front end down. Unfortunately, I don't have a C7 front end. They're actually uh, pretty rare, kind of hard to get in, in a total condition, obviously. Um, so I'm going to use a C6 instead, and when a C7 comes available, I can see about modifying it if I need to. I'm not sure it's really important. If I look at the A arms between the C6 and the C7, they're actually they're identical. They don't they don't uh, have any geometric differences whatsoever. The front end may actually be slightly tuned slightly differently, but the A arms themselves are perfectly identical. So we're going to go ahead with uh, that. Then we're going to get our C6 down here and get that on the chassis jig and well actually i'm sorry the welding table get it uh, leveled up how we did on the on the um, on the rear end section So our Lamborghini C6 is now up on the welding table. It's only uh, what a quarter of the car actually, I guess it is. And obviously it's got a big boo-boo right here, but that's not important. What is important is these pickup points right here. These pickup points uh, attach the sub cradle and actually set up the three-dimensional space where the A-arms need to live. So what I need to do next is, like I was saying, is I've got to get this the proper ride height. And um, I'm going to do that by using, by using this device here. So this is actually a Kenmore device. It's a, it's a trim height device specifically designed to attach to the ball joint and then the A-arm and basically uh, look up the GM spec as to what that angle should be and you set that. So this will then set the uh, ride height to according to the lower A-arm, which obviously will go ahead and it automatically sets the ride height to the upper A-arm. One thing I am considering, unlike the back end where I had to do some major modification, I actually may be able to salvage these upper uh, frame rails. I might just be able to cut it off close to the firewall and use this whole front section, which would actually save me a lot of time because then I wouldn't have to obviously create these uh, points here, the uh, AR mounting points. So we'll see if that's going to work out or not after we get this thing leveled uh, into the right ride height and we'll probably do some test fitting with the body. So. So I ran into a problem. I obviously knew this was in an impact here, but unfortunately it's a little worse than I thought and I can't get the car level. I've been trying for quite some time now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut off the front piece here um, and weld on a new section and actually that'll allow me to get the uh, sides here. Because it, it, from measuring it from here, it seems to be fine. It's, it's just this whole corner is kind of smooshed up in the air. So if I go ahead and cut it here, uh, that should be fine, shouldn't have any problems with that, and uh, then I should be able to get the frame properly leveled out. I actually might take and cut the back 
cabin part off to or the, or the, or the front firewall here. I don't need that in my current measurements as well. So I'll just go ahead and take care of that. So the front bumper has been removed and the damaged part obviously. I use this internal bracket on both sides as a squaring mechanism so I've cut both sides uh, perfectly to that uh, spot and then flattened them off there. I don't know how bent this is so what I'm going to do is actually use a laser level and I'm going to use it off the suspension here and I'll get both of these sides front to back side to side. Uh, leveled up and then I'll put a new front part in here. I'm not too worried about them being able to come in because they're actually bolted to the sub cradle so this is actually pretty much held in place right now and when I actually did remove that front side I don't know if it's a little hard to tell in the video it dropped down a bit about a quarter of an inch so um, it was definitely under a lot of stress there so well let's get the front bumper the new front bumper rewelded on. All right so I've got a new front bumper on pretty excited about that looks pretty good. Uh, the frame was a little tweaked. I was able to strap it down and before I welded this on, get it perfectly level. Well, it's, it's level within 0.03 of degrees and uh, about 2 sixteenths out right here. So that's plenty, plenty good enough. So now, uh, what I have decided, if it wasn't obvious, I am going to salvage these frame rails, this cradle section here, uh, obviously the top and the bottom. So to do that, I had to get the car perfectly level on the right height. And then, I'm going to put a line, T-square, be perfectly square to the ground and uh, strike it across the uh, strike it across the uh, frame rail there and cut it perfectly uh, level to the ground. Then I'll be able to use that as a starting point to connect my frame rails uh, to the front and to the back. So let's get started with that. So I've gone ahead and moved the whole front section from my welding table over to the chassis jig here, and I've got it at the right right height. Uh, then I've actually just gone ahead and cut up some of these tubes. I will say I'd probably make a little bit of a mistake when I cut the C6 off right here. Um, I actually picked that point because it was uh, it had some it had some locator points on there, so it was really simple to shoot a straight line across that to cut it off. I really should have extended that probably about another inch or so. Now I'm, uh, I'm going to have some a uh, little bit of hard angle trying to make these two together. It, it, it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to do it, but. Uh, just in hindsight, I wish I would have extended that a little bit. Next frame, I probably will do that. Uh, I guess that's the uh, disadvantage of not putting this in CAD first, not seeing that problem. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to go uh, and have any time lapse right now. I've got to do a lot of just checking. I've got to get this perfectly square. Everything needs to be exactly where it should be as far as ride height goes, because if I don't have the three-dimensional space correct, then it's uh, even though it looks like it's square, it'll be... Uh, out of, out, of a, out of level basically. So I'm going to do a lot of leveling, a lot of checking, um, and then once I get that done, obviously I'll weld it up and I'll come back once I get it welded up. Woohoo! All right guys, I have made a chassis, my first chassis. Um, I've actually built cars before, but I've never constructed the whole thing from ground up, so it's kind of pretty exciting. Um, it is pretty weak chassis, I will admit that at this point. Uh, the front is welded to the back. It will roll around in one continuous unit. However, there's a lot of structure still missing. For example, we don't have a front firewall. We don't have a rear firewall. We don't have an A pillar. We don't have any pillars for that matter. But uh, it is a good starting point and um, I do need to start working on the next portion of setting up the actual chassis itself, creating these A pillars and the rakes. To do that though, I really need the glass because the glass actually determines the actual A pillar line as well as the roof line, as well as these down tubes. Um, because obviously if the glass is so narrow up top, uh, it kind of determines the roof line as it goes down the side. So hopefully that will be solved next week. I've uh, ordered some glass. Um, don't want to jinx myself, so I'm just going to wait uh, wait till it gets here to kind of talk about that some more. But uh, if that is the case, then we are well on the way of making some additional progress very, very quickly. Uh, I did throw I go ahead and throw the body up here just for reference. The body's going to change dramatically over time. Uh, for example, this bottom down here, I don't like that. I do like this line, how this kind of continues down, and I do like this fender roll, but the wheel openings are obviously too small for these tires and rims, um, so those need to be changed. need to change out the headlights, need to change out the taillights, um, change out a lot of stuff, but uh, we have making great progress. So anyway, I think this uh, is a good stopping point for this video, and uh, if you're interested and you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. 
And as always, thanks for watching.